our relationship with money is a very interesting one. And often when people come in my world, they're looking for a strategy, an action plan, but the strategy and the action plan is just a part of the component. There's so much under there. So this week we talk with Emily June Wilcox, who is a money magnetizer, and we talk about money wounds. So if you're an entrepreneur and you're stuck at a certain level, or there's more month that's left than money at the end of the month, you really want to pay attention to the money wounds that we are going to cover in this conversation. She mentioned them, and as she mentioned them, my, I felt it in my body. I'm sure you're going to feel the same. So make sure you have a pen and paper and listen to this interview with Emily. It's really powerful, and it will bring, and bring some light on maybe you sabotage yourself. Let's go to my interview. Emily? Thank you so much for accepting my invitation today. Oh, it is my pleasure. I'm so happy to be here. So we were talking about, we started our conversation before recording because, and I had goosebumps when we were talking to me, but before we go into our topic for today, could you please take a moment to introduce yourself, please? Yes. Hello, everyone. I am Emily June Wilcox. I am like a crystal loving, coffee drinking entrepreneur. I built multiple seven figure businesses truly from kind of wounded masculine hustle culture energy. And I finally did what I love the most, which is the inner work. I worked on healing my money wounds and my relationship to money. I started coaching women entrepreneurs. I put my other businesses in the hands of my capable team so that I could truly live out my life's purpose, which is to help people, primarily women, understand and heal their money wounds so that they can step into more massive wealth, which I really believe will change the whole planet. Such a beautiful mission. I love it. Again, I'm still like, oh, you know, because there's just the relationship that we have with money is a very um, interesting one, if we can say. Yes. Because there's so much pattern and emotion attached to it. So can you walk us, what are money wounds? Yeah. So it's a great question because money wounds are the limiting thoughts and feelings about money that create these unhealthy thought patterns and stored trauma in our body. We all have them, but they do manifest differently. And in my work with hundreds of entrepreneurs, I've noticed patterns and been able to categorize them into six distinct money wounds. Um, But like you said, we do have this very unique relationship with money. And so what I find is that we just project all kinds of things on money that have nothing to do with it, right? So if dad abandoned us, we might be afraid that money is going to abandon us. If we feel inherently unworthy, we're using the lack of money in our bank account to, to be evidence of our unworthiness. So all of these feelings, all of these traumas that in some ways aren't related to money at all, get entangled in our relationship with money and really stop us from showing up in an empowered way. And this is where... Is this where we will actually sabotage ourselves? Absolutely. Put that into reality. Absolutely. You know, the, the money shame wound, which is at its core, like I'm not worthy of money, mm-hmm. is a huge repellent, major, major repellent of money coming from all sources. And when the money does come to us and we have that wound unhealed, then it just shape shifts and chameleons a little bit into over delivering and feeling so codependent on our clients getting results so that we feel worthy of the money that we've already been paid. Mm. The evil money wound, I'm going to be judged or I'm going to have to go against my moral integrity to get more money is a major ceiling to our next wealth up level because in order for us to call in more money and to step into that next level version of ourselves, we have to reconcile the scared child within us that feels like 
but what if my family or my community abandons me and judges me because of it? And that I see a lot of entrepreneurs with that one. Yeah. Because they come from non-wealthy families or they come from a background and now it's like, but I, but I can't have all this wealth. Right. Because I will judge them. So yeah. So when you talk about self-sabotage, it's like, if the money comes in on the level of need, they're okay with it. But some, for some reason they can never get to surplus. They can never get beyond that. Why? It's self-sabotage. But the thing about self-sabotage, the shadow side of it is it's actually self-protection. Yes. It's the part of us that wants to stay safe, that doesn't want to be judged, that wants to have belonging, that wants to be an important member of our family and our community. And so if we look at it as a protection mechanism, I think it's a bit more of like a loving way to really understand why we've subconsciously done what we've done. Yes. And I do agree. That is a way that we protect ourselves. Yeah. Even if it's that not, not what I want, that is how my brain will actually protect me to Absolutely. stay in what I know. So what are these, you, you mentioned a few, but what are the six yep. money wounds? Yeah. So the money shame wound, I'm unworthy of money. The evil money wound, having lots of money will make me bad. The money trust wound, I don't trust myself with money. The hard money wound. I have to work harder to make more money. The safe money wound. I don't feel safe unless I've got a nice cushion of money or I'll feel safe once I have money. Which is and never- then the, dis- the disappearing money wound, which is I don't trust money. Money is always leaving me. Those are the six. So I find it fascinating. So do we have, <laughs> try to make my first question because now I have a gazillion questions. How do we figure out which one that I embody the most or which wounds are the most present with me? Yeah. So I have a free quiz that is really a helpful tool for that. You can just go to moneywoundsquiz.com and there's six potent questions that help you uncover this. Mm -hmm. The thing I like about the way the quiz is designed is that you don't just get one result. You'll see like percentages because the truth is we all have a few of these Mm -hmm. in varying degrees. And so I really like this kind of doctor or patient analogy, right? With wounding. So it's like, if you go to a doctor, they're going to first ask you a lot of questions. Where does it hurt? How much does it hurt? How long have you been experiencing these symptoms? Then they're going to look at your body and they're going to examine the wound, all of this so that there's an understanding and an awareness first, and then they can select the right medicine, Mm -hmm. right? So I really believe that the first and most important step for us is, is this diagnosis. It's this awareness because just being able to say, and you might have a physical reaction when you heard me say one or more of those, that's your body telling you there's a wound. It's, it's actually physical evidence of a stored trauma, Mm. right? That clinch or that feeling When we can name that and say, oh, that's my money trust wound. That's what that feels like. I don't trust myself with money when I'm in that wounded place. Giving it a diagnosis, giving it a label, getting curious, asking yourself, where does that live in my body? How does it feel? How long have I felt that way? Does it come out in certain scenarios or is it kind of always with me? That diagnosis, I believe, is actually like 90% of the healing. And I do have some potent medicine for each wound. But if we don't know what the wound is and we can't label it and we can't understand it for ourselves, then then how do we heal it? Yeah. And it it comes to bringing it to awareness. Yes. If it's in my blind spot, I can't do anything about it. Exactly. So I'm curious, how do you see it? in the physical world, in the world of the entrepreneurs that you work with, how do you see the wounds? Yes. So we talked about sabotage. That's one way that a wound is, we see the behavior or the result of a wound. What other ways that you see, "Hmm, you know what, there should be some digging in there. 
Yeah. So there's definitely often like evidence of it in our bank accounts and it can look really different. And we often think that everyone's the way that we are. So the other thing I like about this methodology is it will help you learn more about your spouse or your partner or your mom or your client, Mm -hmm. right? Because let me compare two polar opposites for you. If you have the disappearing money wound where you don't trust money and you expect that money is going to leave you or abandon you, subconsciously, you feel safer, you feel more comfortable when your bank account is almost empty or is empty. Because it's what I know. It's what I know. And it's like, if that's the inevitability, if I know money is going to leave me, do I want 100,000 sitting in my account? And I'm just bracing myself for it to go. No. Mm. And so it looks like impulsive spending, buying the thing, not sitting with money for very long. The money comes in, it goes right back out Mm. again, because it feels safer. It feels more comfortable. And could it be, and it just dawned on me, could it be also that I won't make an effort to launch a project to go and get clients or things like that. Because why anyways, because the money's going to go. It could, it could come through that way. What I find is that a lot of my clients that have the disappearing money wound, they're actually great at making money. It's just like, it looks like this. It's this very dramatic roller coaster. It's like 40 grand came in. And then next week it's like, I don't know how I'm going to make payroll. And it's, it's like, wait, what just happened? So it's these like high highs and low lows tends to be how I see it. But certainly it could be that there is a protection mechanism of like, I don't even want the money to come in because it's going to go. And on the polar opposite of that spectrum is the safe money wound. And with these types of clients, it's like they're sitting on a hundred grand or 200 grand or 500 grand. And they're afraid to buy themselves like the shirt they actually really want. That's $200 because who needs a $200 shirt? Because I feel safe when I have a hundred, 200 grand in my bank account. Yeah. I feel better with the money. And so it feels unsafe to spend it. I don't trust money in circulation. It's like more of a hoarder energy Mm -hmm. around money. Now hoarders don't actually feel safe, you know, and we don't actually like the money in the bank account doesn't actually make us feel safe, but it feels safer than the discomfort of watching the money go. So those are some things, some types of evidence that you will see that can help you also kind of diagnose this for yourself or on behalf of your clients. So sabotaging myself, hoarding money, money disappearing. These are all triggers or evidence, as you say. And I like that to say, okay, maybe there is something under here Yeah, to go and explore. Yes. And I like it because it's good for us. And we have a lot of people who are listening to us who are in the wealth management industry. So if I'm a financial advisor maybe understanding the money wounds of my clients will help me better help my clients. Absolutely. Absolutely. And a big one that comes out for people who are in the wealth management industry or that they should be aware of is the money trust wound. So that means I don't trust myself with money. If I don't trust myself with money, I'm looking for a savior. I'm looking for someone to swoop in and take care of it for me. But hiring someone from that disempowered place, I believe that universe has an energetic protection. Good things don't come from that, right? Mm -hmm. So if I'm making the decision from a place of, oh my God, I don't trust myself. I don't know what to do with this money. Somebody come save me. The chances of that engagement of me hiring a wealth management person that just turns out to make me a ton of money and it's this really beautiful collaborative relationship is so unlikely because what I actually need, what's actually in my highest good is to learn the lesson that when I'm disempowered and I'm trying to just find a savior, 
that I actually have this opportunity to learn how to trust myself and learn how to save myself. Empowerment. Yes. So if I, if I were a financial advisor or wealth management, I would also want to know what my client's money wounds are. Yes. Because if I have a client who is hoarding money and just wants to, you know, leave it cash in their account, there's a money wound there. Yes. Versus if I have somebody who is always calling me 23 times in the day, there's an insecurity there. There's a money wound there. Right. And I'm sure your clients who are wealth management are like, oh, yeah. Like they probably in their mind have these client types categorized. They perhaps just haven't been thinking about like the energetic signature below that, Mm -hmm. which is it's the, it's your client's dysfunctional relationship with money that is manifesting in their relationship with you. Yes. So as an an entrepreneur, I want to know, I want to go and explore, I prefer explore. What are my money wounds? And this applies to, I think, how I manage money, but also the growth of my business. Because if I don't think I can make that much, if I'm not worthy of it, I don't think I'm going to be worthy of a bigger business, of larger clients, of that's going to tap my growth as a business. And could it also influence how I I invest in my business for my business. Like if I want to get a coaching or if I want to get something in my business, my money wound will also reflect there. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, it could be that you're not hiring a coach when, when you really desire one because of your safe money wound. It could be that you just went all in on a coach and over-invested because you actually want a savior, right? Like a money trust wound. Um, it could be that you have a, an unhealed hard money wound. So you've got five coaches that are telling you to hire a copywriter and build these complicated funnels and that you need to run ads. Like it's not that freaking hard for money to come to you unless you make it that way. And sometimes we really overcomplicate our business because of the hard money wound. Yes. There's so many revelation in this conversation that I do hope people will not just hear, but really taking in and go and explore what are my money wounds? Because we were talking just before we started recording that, you know, it's not about the strategy. Right. It's about our wounds. It's everything that we don't see that we're not aware of that come and influence if we're plateaued in our business, if we block in our business, or if we stagnant in our business. So there's so many to go and explore in there. Yeah. It just clears a more effortless path for money to flow to you. And it also means that when you hit the financial milestones that you've been dreaming of, that you can actually feel good and feel worthy and feel safe and feel successful when you hit them. Because it is true. And I've, I've done it myself. Like I, I hustled and did all the things to finally get a hundred K cash month in one of my businesses. Um, and I'll tell you, it didn't feel that good. Like when it happened, I thought that I was going to feel much wealthier than I did. I thought I would feel more successful. I thought my business would feel like more stable and steady and secure than I actually felt because I was projecting all of that onto money. And money can't give us that. It's like, it's a neutral resource. And so the real invitation is, can I feel safe? Can I feel worthy? Can I feel successful? And then I get to sprinkle money on top of that, or I get to have the money and I get to feel good about having the money. I love that because it never feels like we think it's going to feel. Correct. Emily, we could have talked about this for hours. I love it, but Where can people find you online? They want to know about you. They want to know about the wounds. They want to know about the quiz. Where can they find you online? Yeah. So I'm on Facebook, Emily June Wilcox. I'm on Instagram at M makes money and the money wounds quiz is at moneywoundsquiz.com. 
Nice. I will definitely make sure we put all the links in the description of the video. There's so much, and we were saying in the beginning, there's so much relationship tangled, stuff and patterns tangled around money that if people find that they are stuck with their business in any way, go and explore. Yes. What could be the money moments? When you were just naming them before, like my body went, okay, I know there's something there. There's something yeah. there. So it's not about doing more, but it's about exploring more. Absolutely. Thank you so much for accepting my invitation. Mm, thank you so much for the invitation. This was wonderful. I hope you liked the interview. I, and more than that, I hope you go and do the quiz. I hope you bring light on what could be your money wounds. We have more than one, but we carry them. So if you see that you land many clients, there's less clients, you land many clients, you less uh, clients, or that it's never enough, or that whatever pattern that you start to realize as we listen to this conversation, take the quiz, go and explore. It's not about more hustle. It's not about doing more. It's not about the next coach, the next business, uh, the next conference, the next book. It's about going where, where we're unaware, because that is really what makes the biggest difference. And when we shed light on the things that are in our blind spots, that's when we can actually do something about it. And from there, we see that so much more is possible. Thank you for being here week after week, and I will see you next Tuesday.